Meet Cairo. He's a curious and friendly eight-year-old who's navigating life and school in the big city. With a little help from his parents, his big brother, and his friends, and even though being a kid is hard work sometimes, you can have a lot of fun learning along the way. From Wondery, The Adventures of Cairo is a podcast that brings you stories for the entire family about kindness, courage, and responsibility. In the episode, Black is Beautiful, Cairo is hitting the road with his dad and grandpa to visit the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., If you are thinking about many eight-year-olds dream of spending the entire day in the museum, you'd be right. But Cairo quickly learns this trip is different and discovers there's much more to Black history than he realized. I relate to this podcast because Parker is not yet eight, but seven, and has also discovered Black history in a different light. Follow the adventures of Cairo wherever you get your podcast. You can listen ad-free on Amazon Music or Wondery app. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking your credit score? Didn't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash think. That's Chime.com slash think. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank in a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some users' scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except to money pass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Welcome to the Think Loud Crew podcast. Three moms. No? What? Yes, <laughs> we're doing so great. <laughs> I had so much faith. I was only smiling so hard because you said I might not be able to speak English. And I was thinking, what language would you oh. speak? <laughs> you were doing so well. I just don't know what happened. <laughs> Come on, Shannon. I, I believe we can. All right. Do- Welcome to the Think Loud Crew podcast. Three moms getting real with parenthood relationships in our WTF moments of our daily lives. Today, we're just been connecting. We haven't been together in a few weeks. I think it's It's been been like five. It's been a while. (laughs) To be exact. I'm pretty sure it's been five weeks. Somebody messaged me and was like, um... Like, I get that you guys all have schedules and, like, kids and, like, this isn't your full-time job. But I just want to let you know, it's been, like, five weeks. Oh, shit. People have been counting. <laughs> no, they really are. Um, so we put up a poll of assumptions and someone was like, I assume that, you know, the, pri- the podcast is no one's priority. And I was just like, dang, they're like, they have no faith. I saw that one that hurt my feelings. I was like, I'm sorry, it is. I promise. I felt that one. But y'all, that is not the truth. I didn't feel that one because I've done at least four episodes in the past of these five weeks by myself. No, no so I feel you. I, I, know, I like, feel horrible. It's a I priority like- for me. No, I feel horrible. I feel like I've been ghosted. Just kidding. <laughs> like, what? I don't Shannon know where I've been. Shannon's the ghost now. Shut up. <laughs> I have turned into the ghost. 
I feel like I haven't been on the podcast for five weeks. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> Where you've been? What What's going on with you, Shannon? I don't know. I feel like every time I'm like, oh, let's record. And then, I'm, uh, oh, the episodes will get recorded. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm here, you guys. I'm here for y'all. I'm ready to talk. I have a lot to talk about. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What's popping, sis? I don't know. There's a lot. Um, I know a lot of people want to know about just my life in general and like hair stuff and work. And that's where I've been the last couple of weeks. It's just been working my little ass off. And um, I feel like literally when you pray to God and you ask and put things out in the atmosphere of asking of what you want, things will come to you. And that's how I feel. And I'm feeling so blessed. I've been on set on um, House of CB and some other clothing brands that I work for, and I'm just super blessed. They just keep booking me, and it's amazing work. So um, that's where I've been, you guys, and being a mom in the beginning of this year, beginning of January was a lot for me. Um two like three amazing two deaths happened which is not amazing but and then also I found out my best friend was pregnant so just dealing with those things and um wrapping those type of things around my head and understanding what it all meant um for myself for Parker um it's been I feel like I've been on a like just on a roller coaster of life recently. And I feel like I'm slowly this week, I'm finally being able to like slow down a little bit and like just reconnect with myself. So that's what I'm currently currently up to right now. Yeah, you've had a, you've been on an emotional roller coaster. Um, you've been sure. working a lot, parenting full time. <clears throat> you've been juggling a lot. Um, I think just like emotionally and spiritually. So Shannon, with everything that you've been going through, like, what have you, like, what have you been doing to like get yourself through things or what have you not been doing? Like what, I guess I'm just trying to understand, like. I I think I've been distracted for the most part. Um, For the most part, I've been distracted with work. I don't, I haven't stopped. So I don't think I have coped with anything really or and I feel like I've been alone a lot maybe that's just me in my head but um I feel like I've been that person for everyone to lean on and to cry to and stuff like that and so I feel like I think I've talked about this before like I don't like going to people and crying or like putting my hurt onto people even to my closest friends and the people that love me the most um It's just been interesting. Um, For one of the deaths, I'll be open with it. Um, Parker lost his little sister, unfortunately. Um, She was suffering with a heart condition and um, been suffering for a while. And so for me and his dad, for his dad, he's been just kind of down and out. Um, I couldn't imagine losing a kid and... um, it's just something that I couldn't imagine for any parent to go through um, for her mom and for uh, Robert. Um, so for me, it was really interesting to just have, I had to hold in a secret because his dad wasn't ready for him to know. And so when it, he finally told Parker, it was within the weekend of her service. So I had to, juggle him learning about his little sister's death that he didn't really see often because she was in the hospital, but he knew he had a sister. He knew that, you know, he was a big brother and he loved her and all these things. So once his dad told him about it, um, Parker is one of those people who holds a lot of things in. He doesn't really speak too much about a lot of stuff, but he does when he wants to. So when his dad told him, he was just kind of silent. And then after the fact, he wanted to call one of my parents right away. And so when he told my when he told my dad, he just started bawling. And how did, how did you guys- his emotion. 
How did you guys have the com? Were you present for the conversation, or was it just yes. him and his dad? How did you guys? No, it was. <clears throat> hmm? I was gonna say, how did you have the conversation, or like, how did you get to like the um, you know, a, get to the point of agreeing to both tell him about the situation and whatnot? Uh, I think we agreed because he was telling me that. Robert was telling me that the service was coming that weekend. And so we were talking like, oh, he was saying, oh, I don't know if he should come. I don't know how it'll be that day. Um, He's like, I don't want Parker to see me this way and this and that. And so I said, well, that's fair. Like, whatever you feel like this is your like, I'll let you lead. Mm -hmm. And then so that was the time he was like, I don't want Parker to come. And I was like, okay, fair. And then he said, I want him to come. So I said, well, it's only fair for you to come and you tell Parker about it because you can't just blindside him and have him show up to his first funeral and his, which is his sister, which is a lot to take in as a seven-year-old. So he told him, I would have told, I would have done it a little differently. I would have told him earlier than he did. Um, but he told him the day before he was going to a funeral. Um, and we just sat down with him. His dad just um, took his time. and But I made sure that he explained what happened and what the process was of like what happened to her and all these different things. So he can get an understanding of you know, of it all. But at the time, I didn't really have, we kept asking, do you have any questions for us? Are you like, where, you know, but at the time, I think he just needed to just sit in silence for a moment. Yeah. So it took him a while after the fact, after Robert left the house for him to really process it with me. And like, I just was, you know, making sure that he was okay at the time. How do you think Parker is handling it now? Like, do you still feel so? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Can we back You're up? Good. I'm just trying to process it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Robert told Parker the day before the funeral. And yeah. then the next day, Parker went to the funeral. Yes. A lot. Yeah. 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 It I was hard for so me to put on. To him in such a short period of time, he doesn't even process the day before. And then to throw him in that environment the next day just seems like a lot. Yeah. And for me, honestly, I didn't want him to go because one, I just, since I'm with Parker 24 seven, I feel like Parker didn't, that night he was so emotional like right after Robert left, he called my both. Well, he wanted he wanted f- hit the people he knew the best. So he wanted to call my mom or my dad. He was like, I need to call Nana or Papa. So when he called my dad, he just sobbed. So I kept telling him, I was like, it's okay. We'll see how you are tomorrow. You know, that's what I kept telling Parker. I said, we'll see what, what how you feel tomorrow. Like I kept checking in. I said, are you feeling okay? Like, how are you feeling? Like, you know, I don't want, I didn't want him to jump in like that. Cause it was, I feel like you said, like, it's so soon. Like I didn't give you time to process anything. Yeah. Cause it was one, it was at night when I, when we told him and then two, it was bright and early in the morning when he was going to go to the funeral. So I was like, yeah, it was just that, like that, that time frame was like, okay, like, I don't, I don't know, you know, but at the end of the day, I didn't want to step on anyone's toes and like be rude and be like, no, your son's not going. But Shannon, this is when like, you're the primary parent, like no disrespect, oh, to I know. but it's like, you're the one you, oh, you, said know. you deal with Parker 24 seven. And it's like the, he didn't really, this is, I, I love you as, as your friend. Like, I love you. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not here to judge or like say anything out of disrespect but like I felt completely I felt very different about how 
I think I would have imagined myself going through this. And it's like, it was, it's been bothering at me the last few weeks. Cause I didn't know how to necessarily talk to you about it at times. Cause Wait, I didn't so want you to- knew about this. I'm just finding everything out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I talked to you about, oh, I guess. Girl, I, I feel like I'm sitting here like Parker. I'm in fucking shock of everything. Oh, yeah, I was, I, it was, maybe I talked to mom about it. Cause I was like, mom, am I, how do I talk to Shannon about this? But I was like, I didn't, in my opinion, I didn't think I, it was too much for Parker. I was like, I could wait on this news. Um, I think that but I'm but honestly, on um, me. Yes. But I get uh, and, and I understand. I understand what you're and saying. And I get yeah. Robert's position, and I get yeah. Robert's position. And so I don't my think there's a right or wrong answer. No, there isn't. Exactly. There isn't. I don't think. Mm-mm. In my defense, I don't think there's. I don't think one. I don't think any parent or on both sides, no matter if you're a full time parent, half time parent, whatever the case may be. I don't think anybody in this world is ever ready for a sibling to pass away. And I don't think that anybody has the right way to handle a situation that way. Death is one of the hardest things in life to understand, to process, to get. And unfortunately, Parker had to had to figure it out one way or another. And I don't think, I think me as a parent, yes, it might have been too soon for the time frame of telling Parker there was no right way or time or when to tell him before his birthday, after his birthday, or whenever. And um, because it happened before Parker's birthday. So Robert didn't want to tell him before his birthday because he didn't want to ruin his birthday. So, okay, I respected that. Yeah, let's let him live up his life. And then, so we told him after his birthday, which is still, you know, he's processing that he just turned seven and he had the best birthday of his life. But then, yes, it was a short time frame. I put my two cents in. And then at the same time, then when he went to the funeral, trust me, I was, I one, I couldn't go with him because I was working. Two, I was uncomfortable. I wasn't sure of myself. I wasn't sure of the situation because it was, it hurt me because I wouldn't be able to hold and be with my son um, and for him to process what was going on. Um, But then maybe to send like one of your parents with him just because that's his. Yeah. I mean, besides you, yeah. his next comfort zone are his grandparents. Yes. Yeah. Um, my dad was on call. My dad was was there. That was my person of making sure that Parker was okay that day. Um, just because I I wasn't okay at work the whole time, just knowing that my son was experiencing something that I wasn't be able to be there. Um, and I know that my parents are his comfort zone. Um, like I'm in knots by talking about this, but yeah, um, he, I, when, after I talked to Robert about the funeral, he just said he was crying and, you know, when I went to go pick him up, I just feel like he was just off and, um, he seemed happy after the fact to see he's with family and whatnot. And my, my dad said it just to give him that time to spend with that side of the family so he can heal a different way. It wasn't my time to heal with him, but I had the rest of the time to heal with him. So I do periodically check in with him. It's, it's been just a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to deal with. It's, um, it's yeah it's a whole other world it's um I kind of feel like with this topic I had never really thought about it before but when we started doing research for rage regardless and like when we would do um when shine would do you know her fundraising periods or have families reach you know right to us and we would get engaged in that way. There were a lot of stories where you would just hear about, you know, the loss of a sibling and like how those Mm -hmm. conversations had to be had. 
And I had never like, to me as a parent, it was just a lot to read and intake. So just any parent who has to make that decision, no matter what your decision is, like to me, like you're a brave, courageous parent because the the conversation can go either way. Like Cheyenne said, there's no right or wrong way how to go about it. Um, but I think it would be really great if there were like any people who have other people who have dealt with this um, kind of this conversation or this topic within their family, if they could chime in or maybe share tips or things that they used or like, you know, even like bereavement coaches, you know, and in, in my doing my postpartum doula work, I'm learning about all these bereavement coaching and just how to have these difficult conversations within your family. Um, so it's, yeah, even in these last few weeks, it was a section of my work that I have to get to, but it's like, just based on what's been going on, I kind of was stuck, you know, jumping ahead in my research and learning, but it's, it is, it is a part of life. Um, mm-hmm. it is something that we all do deal with. And it's, yeah, I remember the first time I really feel like I dealt with death. I was young. I was like 12. It's not as young as Parker, but it's those moments, they affect you. Um, whether, you, you know, was, they, did Parker ever, I know you said like, he really didn't really see her because she was in the hospital a lot. He, they, so they clearly met, but yeah, it was just not like a lot right Mm -mm. he I think the moment that he remembered her because I was asking him like hey like do you remember your sister like do you but I made it like I was trying to make it light I was like what are some good memories you have of your sister like or what are the things that you remember about her and he at the moment couldn't remember and then I pulled up a a picture of her of him holding her but I think he didn't really see her that much but the thing that he did say was like I didn't get a chance to be his be her big brother he's like I didn't I don't have memories mom I don't remember Mm -hmm. so I think that was like one of the things that he was struggling with yeah that's confusing I was gonna ask because I feel like from what I know from the outside he didn't really see her so I wonder if it's harder on him processing it because in his head he's probably like I probably should have a memory or an idea of a good time but because he didn't have a relationship with her is it tougher on him but then at the other side of it it's like if he had a relationship with her it would still be be Mm -hmm. tough on him and I don't know which one is tougher you know what I mean it's just like a different Either way, it's going to be a uh, tough conversation. Grief. It's like, which way do you grieve? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's what I wonder. That's a good point, Chai, because that's I think what I wonder, like, are you grieving the fact that the what ifs? I was like, oh, like, like what? what, Yeah. Like, I don't have these memories of my sister. Should I be remembering these things? Or yeah, if he did have that relationship with her, and having these fond memories but I think he was so young when he was when he saw her that maybe that's why he didn't have those like huge memories but I think he has like small ones but at the moment he just didn't know how to process it like you said like as a seven-year-old me Cairo He's a curious and friendly eight-year-old who's navigating life and school in the big city. With a little help from his parents, his big brother, and his friends. And even though being a kid is hard work sometimes, you can have a lot of fun learning along the way. From Wondery, The Adventures of Cairo is a podcast that brings you stories for the entire family about kindness, courage, and responsibility. In the episode, Black is Beautiful, Cairo is hitting the road with his dad and grandpa to visit the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. If you are thinking about many eight-year-olds dream of spending the entire day in the museum, you'd be right. But Cairo quickly learns this trip is different and discovers there's much more to Black history than he realized. I relate to this podcast because Parker is not yet eight, but seven, and has also discovered Black history in a different light. 
Follow the Adventures of Cairo wherever you get your podcast. You can listen ad free on Amazon Music or Wondery app. Money can't buy you happiness, but not worrying about your money comes close. That's where Chime can help you smile more. They were just named the number one most loved banking app. With payday up to two days early and fee free overdrafts up to $200, they offer financial peace of mind in your wallet. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. See for yourself why Chime is so loved at Chime.com slash think. That's Chime.com slash think. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit cards provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank in a member's FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot me. Chime was a 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Apptopia. It's different because yeah. this has happened. And I know Robert has another daughter that has a similar son, thing, right? He has a son, but yes. Oh. I didn't know it was a boy. He's a boy? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I thought it was two girls. Okay, anyway. <laughs> My bad. Does it wait? So his son it has a similar condition to what his daughter had, right? His son, I believe, um, if anyone's listening that knows them, I think it's a lung condition, but he has. Um, what is it called? Yeah, he has. Uh, he's he's at uh, home and not in the hospital. But he's at home. He's doing well. He's the cutest little thing ever. Got it. So, but I think this, this time around, Robert like put more energy into having his kids have a relationship with each other. Yeah, I feel like this time around. Um, I feel like this time around, Parker is actually getting to be an older brother, be able to hold him and like play with him and go there, go to his house and like spend develop, time. Develop a relationship with him and and his mom, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, because he gets to hang out with them. But at the same time, I feel like uh, Robert's grieving is. I don't know. He's grieving. So it's hard to catch him. And I think as we mentioned before, Parker's getting older and older and he's actually realizing that his dad's not answering the phone or he's getting that time with his dad that he wants. Parker's older. So he wants to go over his dad's house and play video games and have that man um, energy. So he's not getting as much as he would like. And I don't want to, for me, yeah, you're grieving, but you still have, like you said, you still have your oldest that is realizing a whole bunch of shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. That needs you. So. For Mm -hmm. Robert grieving, that's tough. Mm Mm-hmm. I know that with Parker, you've kind of struggled in the past with co-parenting and him being there, him not being there, him, you know, doing certain things. Was he really active in the daughter's life or was he kind of the same? Um, from my, from being an outsider, (laughs) um, from being an outsider, I believe that his family was not allowed to really see the daughter from that's from my understanding um from for whatever reason you know their relationship and whatever happened but I don't think that he was too much involved during that time so which is why they had they had two different services so the mom had a service and then Robert had a service So Parker didn't actually see (laughs) his Cheyenne's face. Um, Parker didn't actually see a casket or the burial happen. 
Okay. Oh yeah. So his- it, 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 it's there's there's a there are good notes to this because we Shannon and I were talking and then we talked about the actual service because I went to a yeah. service for a kid before and I, I was like, I feel Hell like nah. it's probably a lot better mm-hmm. because when you were first talking yeah. like Parker's going to the service, I'm picturing a grieving mother. I'm picturing yes. a casket oh. for a child, like all these different things that oh, I yeah. like. This is way too much. But no, 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 no. So the mom had a whole different service for herself, had a which was the proper, the proper way, like the barrel, the bearing, and all, all that kind of stuff. So that was that was that was happened. So yeah, it wasn't with the mother. It wasn't with her side of the family. It, so her side of the family had a service, and then Robert had just like his pastor, and it was just like them praying at her site okay yeah so robert wasn't allowed to go to the first service no No. wow yeah so i that's another thing i like i would bring up which is really interesting like i don't know i just pray that both of them can heal you know at some point i don't know I don't know. I don't want to speak on them right now because I don't want any backlash. Yeah. But um, this is an impressive family, you know? It's so sad. Yeah. The situation is that I hate to use the word sad because I just feel like everyone says, oh my God, that's so sad. But like, it's genuinely really fucking sad. Yeah, it's devastating. Yeah, I couldn't imagine what she's going through. Mm-hmm. But also, I couldn't imagine what she's going through. And on top of that, being so angry with the person I had a child with to the point where okay. they're not even allowed at the service. It's just another layer of like grief. Yeah. It's almost like you're grieving. Yeah. People two, two things. Yeah. People. I just pray for her a lot. And I pray for Robert and that he realizes that he has two other children and to not, make the same mistakes, like be don't a father. For granted. You know what I mean? Don't take your, like I said, don't take your kids for granted. It's just crazy. That's just crazy. The whole thing is crazy. My mind it is, is crazy. crazy. The whole mind is just blown right now. I'm just like, what, what say that again. And then what happened? That's just, no, my, I, it's, it's one of those things that you're lost for words. And then I feel like I just keep trying to like process it in in the mother's light. Like I I feel you, but then that's hurtful. Like I, like I, you know, I feel your pain and I like, I just, I wish that on nobody and just to, I couldn't imagine. Have you ever thought about reaching out to her? Um, no, I haven't. I mean, no, but in my heart, I would if things were different. Um, I don't know. I, it probably has pro- crossed my mind, but just in the past, it wasn't um, pretty. And I'm sure if she has, you know, I don't know. That's a weird like space type of thing You're just because sure the last you time received i don't yeah i don't think i received well yeah um i understand that i thought about that too but i but i totally with all my heart in the way i the person who i am like i have no hurt or pain towards that person and i just pray that it, I can imagine her grieving by herself, you know, and not having, or I hope she has the support that she needs as a mother, as the person that was there with her child that whole time. Do you have any kind of relationship? Not really. Okay. Not really. I mean, when, I mean, when they were together, I think they had a little bit of a relationship, but I, that whole situation when I was involved in Parker before they had their kid wasn't the most healthy. So, hmm. 
Yeah. Well, prayers to the family, prayers to, to the mom. Um, just praying that she receives the support and the, the healing, you know, recovery support tool services that she needs to get through this journey. And also praying for Robert that he is able to heal um in this journey as well. And I'm praying that better comes for Robert and Parker together and the other baby boy. Me? And that he is able to really take this moment and, you know, take the lessons and the jewels that come from it and spend more time on building his relationship with his, with his sons. Cause. Yeah, me too. Because even. Yeah. We, it was even to the point where I was thinking about, but I'm happy that I did it, that we weren't going to have a birthday party for park um, this year, just because like his dad's space and just everything just being weird but it ended up being good his dad we had a birthday party at our house and then his dad came with his baby brother so it was nice that he showed up for Parker and his little brother was able to come I love that I love that I love that As I've been building out my postpartum doula packages and learning about services that I can offer my recovering birthers, I've been really excited to create recipes with nutritional and healing benefits. Thanks to Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware that features a chemical-free ceramic coating so food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard to pronounce compounds will leach into your healthy ingredients. I can safely taste, sample, and try all the recipes I want in the comfort of my kitchen. I am most excited to light up my Dutch oven and make hearty stews and soups that are beneficial to postpartum healing. Caraway also has the cutest whistling tea kettle, which is hands down a timeless kitchen essential. Gotta get you one of those. Of course, they come in many eye-catching colors, are free of harmful chemicals. Seriously, easy cooking and easy cleaning. Plus, they are well-loved. Make sure you check out the reviews. Visit carawayhome.com slash TLC to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash TLC or use code TLC at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Let's switch up the conversation real quick, ladies. <laughs> Let's, Let's lighten up the mood a little. Hey, Cheyenne, you didn't hear this story from me because you were in Aspen, sis living your best life oh oh okay okay i wasn't about to call you and be like hey girl what are we doing? I'm sorry i could have told you I as was, well i was also looking at pictures that you were sending mom and i and i was peeping out on instagram saying "Ooh, let me see the fur Ooh, let me see what shoes we're wearing today what is what purse is being what is it what was that no limit first was being worn I was you were you were fulfilling my mom fantasies that day oh my god you're living your best life shy yeah I really enjoy this newlywed like we're married we've got married couple friends we're taking (laughs) we're taking trips with none of the kids and all of y'all have two kids yeah somebody messaged me that it was like how dare you not bring your kids I'm so Huh? No, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> My guys. kids go everywhere, everywhere with me. And it was kind of it was ironic that at the same time somebody was like, You guys don't ever bring your kids. And literally at that exact moment, me and the girls were booking trips to go to the Caymans with the girls, like our daughters. I love so it. Oh, nice. the girls trip <laughs> for the older girls and then the the um babies are staying behind so they're probably gonna be like oh my god now you love Ryder more than ace but i'm just sorry <laughs> i'm like girl Can't I'm, win. I'm booking a trip right now for my daughter but I'm how like, dare you spend time with one child and not both because exactly, you know, individual like, time is important have, too my kids have gone with me since they were babies mm-hmm. um did we lose shannon oh shannon Okay, so tell us about Aspen. Um, 
Like I was saying, like my kids have traveled since they were babies. Ryder got her first passport when she was like three months and Ace the same. So I wanted to say my kids have been to a lot of places. Leave me alone. But I'm just kind of tired of arguing with people online lately that I just (laughs) let things go and I just continue to do me. But Aspen was a lot of fun. Shannon, are you back? Okay, so we're back. Okay. It was really cold. How cold was it? It was like negative degree cold. And I realized that I'm not a cold type of trip person. I'm like a sunny on a beach type of trip person. So like, I feel like Aspen's one of those places where it's like, I did it. I don't necessarily have to do it again. Did Zach enjoy it? Cause I know he likes winter sports. Zach really did like it, but the altitude is way different than it is out here. So like you get kind of like altitude sickness, which isn't fun. It's like you're like nauseous and like low key dizzy. So I kept on thinking, am I fucking pregnant? And then I'm like, oh, no, it's the altitude. No, no, that's scary. Yeah, I didn't really like the way it made my body feel, to be honest. But overall, it was a fun trip. It's the same crew that I went to Dubai with. And we all travel really well together. We all have two kids. We're all like married. It's just fun and it's easy. They're easy to travel with. Oh, that's good. So Zach has a full bromance. Zach and the boys have booked a trip with no kids and no wives. They're going, oh, wow. They're Where going are they going? Trip. They're going to Bahamas. So it's like... <laughs> The boys are going to Bahamas. The girls are going to Caymans. And then we're all meeting in Miami. Oh, I I love love that. We have like two nights in Miami for all of us together. And then we're coming back home. But in the beginning of this year, I can't Babies are staying behind. Well, we're going to have the older girls. So like I'll have Ryder with me. Ace is just not coming on this trip. (laughs) But... (laughs) Zach's dad works so much, so he really hasn't gotten a lot of time to spend with Ace. So mm-hmm. this is letting him like spend time with Ace while we go. So it kind of oh. works out like a win-win. I love but I that. Feel like at the beginning of this year, I said that I was manifesting more trips and manifesting like organization, and I really feel like both have been happening. So I feel really good. 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 I love I, that I for, like you. for you. Yeah, we um, just. I like that your manifestations are coming to life. They're trying. We took yesterday, we cleaned out our garage. And if you've seen, I should have done it before and after. Mm -hmm. Because you could not even see the floor in the garage. And like, since we had moved, we hadn't like, there were like probably like 50 boxes that we still have not gone through from the old house to this house and stuff. So we sat there and just were going through things. And we took so much stuff to Goodwill and just like a ridiculous amount of stuff that we had in there that I realized, why do I have this? Like I had every single um, gift card, like a card that people write from uh-huh. writers, like baby shower, first birthday, second birthday. <laughs> Zach is like, you are a hoarder. This card doesn't even have a name on it from somebody who signed <laughs> it. And I'm just like, uh, does that mean I have to throw it away? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was cleaning out my stuff to move to DC. I had all this stuff from when Boz was like a baby and like notes from like baby shower and stuff. When I tell you, I sat there and read them all and then cried when I threw them that away. Was, that was me yesterday. He's like, put it in the trash. I'm like, but this one's from Auntie. He's like, you have about 10,000 odds. <laughs> put that card in the trash. So it was a little hard for me to let go of certain things. But I was really happy because at the end of it, we could actually see our floor of our garage. And that kind of stuff, you could take a picture. You can always take a picture. You always have a digital. I went to the container store after and then bought all the like container systems to hoard, not hoard, to put all Uh the (laughs) The store, not (laughs) hoard. All of the notebooks. Like, oh my God, that's (laughs) not it. So before I got on here, I was in the garage, like organizing all the nail polish. And I just, it's like, I'm like, okay, I see things are, are happening, like organ organizing things. And it just makes me feel like better about myself. We got a Peloton bike and we've been riding the bike every morning. I do 20 minutes. I haven't seen Zach's um, stories. (laughs) 
that, bro. Zach posts every time he's on that damn bike. I'm like, they get it. You ride a Peloton. Zach has an I like. I like it. Zach, Zach needs to be a Peloton ambassador because he no, every day. I know how Zach is with working out too. Zach is not. He's like he'll do it, but he don't really want to do it. Every the fact day that he's been on he his Peloton like up and on it, man. That's part of his bro club too. That's their routine. Peloton. Bro, they're so annoying. They all I post on their. <laughs> I see their <laughs> pictures. <laughs> They post, oh, they post with each other on Instagram, like Peloton, Peloton time. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yeah, well, the, all the boys literally post when they're on Peloton. And what I didn't realize is that you have profiles on there. And like, let's say like, for example, I follow my friend Ashley on there. It shows how many rides she's done, like how good of a ride it was, how many miles, all these different like oh damn if somebody pulls up my account right now they're gonna be like this bitch has been on this bike twice <laughs> like literally they can pull it up so I'll all, post post all your info yes all these people keep on asking me like let me follow you on peloton i'm like let me at least get like 10 rides in so y'all don't really talk about me. <laughs> what you your followers up on peloton Huh? That's crazy. I didn't realize it was like that. On Let them follow I, you. I don't want anybody to follow me yet because then you can ride together. Like, it's like you can okay. ride up together. It's like so a whole like, world. No. What if we had a Think Loud crew Peloton? You have to get a Peloton. First. I know, but like, what if we rode Are our- Are you going to get a Peloton, Kyle? Yeah. yeah. We could do shared rides. You guys want to ride with me? Like ride with the crew, like ride your Peloton. It's your like home. a black girl ride group. With, yeah, like ride with. There them. is. Uh huh. I had oh, a girl cool. set me up and was like, join the black girls ride crew and like See, that could be the all these different things. Crew ride. And I'm like, I'm down to follow and join any and everybody, but like, I've only done it twice. So like, <laughs> let me like get into a groove. I don't even know how to click my shoes out. I'm I'm screaming for Zach every time I'm done. <laughs> Because I'm stuck on the fucking bike. Don't let there be a world disaster or an earthquake. I'll be stuck on the Peloton bike. So the first thing so you have to have special shoes. Yes, and they click in and then you have to like press down and click your foot out to get it out. But because my shoes are brand new, I get stuck and I literally feel like I'm going to break my ankle or like blow my kneecap out when I'm doing it. So oh, Zach man. comes and just takes my foot yeah. out of the shoe. So then my shoes are stuck in my Peloton bike and then he gets angry because he has to pull the shoes off. So then he hits <laughs> the finger on the bike. Like each time it's been a fucking... I'm- I'm going to need a video of you getting on and off your Peloton. No, I figured out how to get on. Okay, well, I'm going to need a real. I can't, you can't, get get off. Off. can't get off. Like, you that don't know how to click it. your shoes off. It's, I literally feel like I'm going to break my ankle when I'm doing it. And I just don't think that having like fat trimmed is worth breaking my ankle. So yes. I like, you want me to ride the bike. I rode the bike. Now I left my shoes. Get me the- out. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. So it is what it is. Maybe after like the fifth time, I'll feel more comfortable trying to get out. But right now, it's just not happening. Uh, now I'm over here trying to think where I can fit a Peloton in my house. They're actually like really small. Like not it's small, pretty, yeah. but it's not like putting like a treadmill in your house. You know, it's like... Okay. It doesn't take up that much space and it's pretty cool. It has like meditation on there. There's stretches. There's like more than just riding the Peloton bike. Like it teaches you things about weight. Okay. You can take other classes on there. So like, for example, today, I do not feel like riding that bike, but I know Zach is going to be like, you didn't use the Peloton today. And we told ourselves that we would use the Peloton <laughs> every day up until our like girl boy trips or whatever. So I'm about to flip that screen and roll that fucking mat out and meditate my bitch on the floor because I'm not writing shit today. I just don't feel like it. And my meditation is going to come up on my profile. So I'm going to say, look, bitch, I did it. I did it. You're not the cussing. Okay. Um, you should see if they have any stretching ones. I know at the beginning of the year we talked about stretching. Huh, bitch, I just told you I'm about to meditate. Okay. Well, there's always tomorrow. 
That's <laughs> all I'm giving her, her brain. All I'm giving I, is meditation. Do we need to jump into these assumptions? Because people assume that you're mean. And right now, you're being a very mean no, sister. I, I don't am, appreciate the name I am, calling. I'm being, you're being a very mean sister. Jack <laughs> said the same thing this morning. All assumptions has, aside, y'all, whether Shine is nice to question. you or not, she is that an has, asshole maybe to her sister. Maybe she doesn't even go do for medication. I literally need Tylenol and like a Xanax right now. My stomach hurts so bad. I want to just take a Tylenol and go Terrible. to sleep. Like everything in me, I'm just in so much pain right now. You so need Zach a asked, what's going on? and some nutrition. I'm on my cycle. So Zach um, asked me, oh. he, said, he said, are you on your period? I said, why the fuck are you asking me that? He said, I just got my answer. And then just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on my period. I think Bezier was trying to avoid me yesterday because he knew Harriet was coming out. Well, you know what Zach Harry. did? He put me in Harry the bed. was like my evil twin yesterday. <laughs> Zach literally told me to get out of the bed and go get in the guest room downstairs because I was being so rude. So he, kept, he put me down here. Then he keeps knocking <laughs> the door. He peeks his head around like I'm just some fucking vampire that's about to eat him. <laughs> and he goes, I'm just making sure everybody's okay in here. Who is everybody? Who's everybody? <laughs> Who is I can't everybody? Oh. At least you know. everybody, all your personalities in one. Yes. He's like, I'm you just doing my job. Is everybody good? <laughs> I want to say no. Oh, we're shit. not okay in here. We're actually not okay. And we're all going to come and attack you right now. Yes. That's, that's just how I feel. It's just not working today. I think what it is is I started a new form of birth control. It's still the pill, but it has a higher oh. dose because... Why did you do that to yourself? Uh, because I get pregnant off of birth control. Like, I, <laughs> I've gotten pregnant off of birth control with Ryder. And I just feel like lately the universe has been telling me that there's a baby in my realm. And I literally was like, oh, up, no. up my hormone dose because I absolutely refuse. So, so I am on a stronger birth control and I think <laughs> that it's making me an even more of a bitch. <laughs> and this is my first cycle that I'm getting since being on this stronger birth control. So, Uh-oh. Like, so it's on 10. It's on fucking y'all. Stop. What if this all backfires on Cheyenne? You know, get pregnant still. I'm with gonna twins. Like, I'm with gonna twins. Somebody. It's yeah, gonna okay. be twins. No, no, no. Let's not put that on her in the I universe. Got a reading no, that, she got a reading, a psychic in the, reading. In lead, and literally, they kept on saying, I see twins. And I said, Bitch, unsee them because I don't see them at all. And she was like, so adamant to keep on telling about these goddamn twins. I'm like, Maybe they're my you twins. You don't see them with me. Do you see them with me? Do you see them sucking Is out my twins? twins in anybody's family? Our my grandfather had grandpa twin, has sisters. twin sisters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just know if Bye. I was getting pregnant. Number one, I would really be questioning my faith in everything that I believe in. Number two, if I got there in the motherfucking screen show twins, I would ask them to take one back. Can you take one back? How do we get? How do we pick twin A or twin B? Because I was gonna say, how do you choose between baby A and baby B? Which set can we go? Can we like, just take one? Can we just do one baby? Oh my God! You I'm gonna start praying for one to eat the other. I swear, after this call, I'm about to go take three birth control just for the fuck of it. Like I'm just so over it right now. <laughs> I'm about to take three more for good luck. So there's no babies in my future. No, I really am so happy with the two I have. I swear to God, I am. I feel like I'm so blessed. I have a girl, I have a boy. They have great personalities. They're really fucking cute. I feel like they're smart. I just think anything other than that, we're taking a chance. The next one's going to come up with like a tail or something. Like my my luck is up. Like I, I my luck is done. <laughs> like I just... I don't want another one. The next one. Oh I, my God. I talked too 
talking yeah. shit about everybody and, and kids. Like, I just feel like the next one's going to be like, yeah, bitch, that's because you talked about so-and-so and so-and-so, and this is your so kid. here I am. Times two, bitch. <laughs> my mom keeps on, anytime, like, anybody around her, not me, but just in general, like, if someone says, oh, my God, that kid was so funny looking, my mom's always like, don't talk about kids because you're going to come out with a lump on their head or something. <laughs> and then we always say, if, if one of our kids come out funny looking, we're going to just put a bow on their head and say, aren't they cute? <laughs> aren't they precious aren't they cute <laughs> you want to hear them sing <laughs> there's this one time where i ran into somebody that we actually all know yes so i'm not gonna say their name but oh she had her baby <laughs> but the baby had to be like maybe like a few years old and like one of, in, a, in a stroller and we ran into her and I was with my mom and I was like, oh my God, it's so fun to see you. I haven't seen you in years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she goes, yeah, this is my baby. And my mom was like, oh, baby, baby. And I'm like, you are so wrong. Ma. So we walk away and I say, Margaret, you couldn't come up with anything else other than baby. And baby. I was trying really hard. <laughs> like, you are going straight to hell for that. Yeah, they were in the grocery <laughs> store. They called me right after that. I was like, mm. Kyle, what's been up with you, Miss? I live in DC. I have two kids and I just work at home and just, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> I've been a lot. I listened to your flower shop and BBL episode. What did you think? I was kind of stuck on the BBL. I couldn't lie. I was like really in tuned with that. Well, part. <laughs> I was stuck on her tits because her tits are huge. So at first, when I first saw her, I was like, dang, she went for the full situation. And then she was like, no, nah, girl, these are my boobs. Like, I just got big boobs. So is she tall or short? She's short. Her. Yes, she's short. But she has like a nice body. She looks great. Well, shit, Super after her great that, personality, she looked great. Oh, yeah, she had really nice legs. When yeah, I, like, so the the time. lady has a BBL. Yes, but it was just funny to talk to her about it because it's like she works with her parent, her mom as well. Um, and, you know, she had to take time off and all this stuff, but just like making the plans, like, you mm-hmm. know, the conversations with her parents. But she did it in Miami. And she was talking about, you know, that shit hurt, but also getting back home, getting back to D.C. She had to fly. Oh, like, you had to fly sitting with your knees on the seat. She was flying like this. Wait, where did she get it done in? I don't remember. In Miami. She said Miami. That flight. So how long is that flight? I'm dead. Oh, no. Long That's enough. better than the girls who get their body done in, like, Columbia. And then they got to be on, like, a 20 hour. Uh, like an hour flight like Atlanta or something. Wait, so do you sit in like first first class or some shit like that? Because if you sitting I if you have first class money. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to sit next to nobody sitting like that. Do you just get the but whole in role? First class, you're sitting next to somebody else like that. That's true. But I would I feel like I just have more room. I would feel better sitting in first class with my new ass stuck in the air than in economy with my new ass in there. Matter of fact, if that was the case, oh, sure. I, like, I would go find a friend to do it and be like, look, friend, we got to take both these seats up so we can look like, you know. Well, I'm sure that we can have to travel with somebody. Of course, of course. But she had like an overall good experience. Like um, she stayed in like a post-op. She had like that post-op experience. So it was nice to hear her experience because I've never really... Like someone so chill be so open about their their BBL that I've talked yeah. to. Yeah. Like I know some people are like real secretive and I always say, sis, we see you. Most people don't talk about it. I mean, people think that I got a BBL and I'm like, why do you think that I would lie about it when I wait, I you didn't get a BBL? It. Shut up. I've talked about getting my boobs. <laughs> and I talked well, that about was one of the assumptions all the time. I'm like why yeah. would I lie about the, the the next phase? Like, I would have no problem saying I got a BBL, but I didn't. Yeah. I got 360 lipo and I've got my boobs done twice. And if I want to get a BBL, I'll tell you guys about it. But literally, 
I think people should know by now with your personality, you are such an open person. You don't give two fucks what people think. It's like, what's the purpose of hiding it? I wish I got a BBO. My booty, like at the bottom, it droops a little bit. I wish I put a little extra fat in there and got my tits because I went to the lingerie store yesterday with mom and literally I'm a 32H. That lady said, ooh, the lace might not cover it all. And I'm thinking, bitch, give me the bra. Just let me try the bra on. Um, if you need somewhere to get, to, like if you send your measurements, you want some nice stuff. I have a store out here in DC um, where they have really good stuff for our our tatas yeah that's so hilarious i was working on set the other day and i was about to get like i was able to like grab all this free lingerie and i was sitting there I'm like oh i want to give like i want to bring shy some stuff and then so i looked in the box and i'm like hmm. i was literally about to text you like shy do you want some lingerie I'm like, mm, I don't think her tits are going to fit in these products. No, they don't. They don't. Trust me. Trust me. I was going to bring you like a box load of lingerie, oh, but I'm like, I don't boring. think my friends would fit in this. <laughs> First off, I took pictures when we were in the store because mom and I walked into the store thinking it's just a lingerie store. So we went in a little blindly. So first thing we see when we turn around is the wall. Can you see this wall? Are those Bill toys? What Where were you? Toys. It's just toys after toys after toys <laughs> after toys, right? And what then, store did you guys go to? For and then we see this super, super okay. mondo toy called Ralph. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Do they so want to kill your vagina? Mom and I are both sitting there like, like, like watching all these toys <laughs> and looking at everything. <laughs> Y'all, we were in there forever. We were cracking up. The lady was giving us demonstrations on different things and what to do with this and where to put this. What store is this? What store were you in? in Century City. But I got a really pretty bra (laughs) that actually fit. um, Good. My big boobs. Oh, I love that. I love oh, that. Pretty. Isn't that nice? So I thought I was going to be a cute wife. So I sent Zach. I was thinking I was sending Zach the picture of me in the bra. And I accidentally sent <gasps> the picture of Roger. <laughs> 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 because I was just moving too fast. So then he calls me and he's like... <laughs> I thought you were going to lunch with your mom to have a business meeting. You're sending me pictures of big black dicks. Like, where are you guys? What are you doing? Who are you with? I'm like, I'm still here with my mom. <laughs> and I was trying to show <laughs> you my sexy bra pic, but I accidentally sent you fucking Roger. <laughs> I, that was my um, guess for the day also. So don't ask me for another one because that's all I got. So don't ask me for another one. Meet Roger. <laughs> Yeah, and then when I was showing mom the bra to make sure it fit, I walk out and this other lady, because I'm screaming, mom, mom, does the bra look good? And then this other lady said, are you at a, are you at a sex store with your mother? And I was like, technically we thought it was a lingerie store. <laughs> but yes. But yes, yes, yes. I am. <laughs> Yes, I am. And we got to the counter and I put my fun things up there and then I turned around and mom put her fun things up there and I was like, ew, oh my God. (laughs) 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Uh Uh-uh, me either. Yikes. (laughs) You said me either. (laughs) Yeah, that was Your mom's fun things more intense than yours? You know, honestly, we bought a lot of the same things, which made me even more uncomfortable. But yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, there was me one too. that it came in an egg packaging. It looked like a surprise o egg. That's what Ryder calls them, surprise o eggs. Yeah. But like the little chocolate eggs, and then there's a surprise toy inside. Yeah. <laughs> and it's basically that same concept. Um, you guys yeah. both bought one of those. Yeah, and then I got well, one that here. Got- pretty cool i got a bath bomb but it's called like a sex bomb but it's like the same concept of a bath bomb and then once it all dissolves there's like a surprise toy inside of it (laughs) so you like surprises i guess 
<laughs> but I, just, I actually really just like taking baths. But <laughs> so I just thought maybe this would spice up the bath because technically I ran out of bath bubbles the other day and I was just sitting in this clear bathtub and I was like, ew. Yeah, like I need something to like cover up these giant tits when they're floating to the top. You know what I mean? Like, do you guys take baths? Yes. Yes, I know what you mean. I don't like taking a clear bath either. Yeah. A in clear the- bath. <laughs> the fact that we're saying a clear bath is literally the funniest thing to me. Well, you like get now. what I mean. Like, it's I know not exactly like what you mean. To the water. So like, I like- hate a clear bath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I feel like every now and then Zach will walk in and it's like when I'm super uber duper relaxed and it's like by this time my tits have floated so high they're touching my chin and he's just like are you okay in there you or are you gonna see, suffocate I'm like I see nipples hey I have a question okay since I've been doing my postpartum classes how do you guys pr- I've been hearing this word pronounced differently how do you guys pronounce the brown part around your nipple Areola. Areola? I've heard it pronounced areola my whole life. Ever what is it? What, what do other people classes? say? Areola. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Areola? Areola? Areola. Is that the correct way to say it? I have no idea, but she, the first thing no, no, I heard no, it's say not. It no, it's not. No, it's areola. Areola. And I thought, no, I thought I was like, it was in my class and this was a white woman from Virginia. So I was thinking like, damn, Arilla. Like, we just say this word completely different and it's a cultural like, thing. Do all black people say areola and white people say Arilla? No, Kyle. No, I no. wasn't thinking that. Excuse me. Yes, you then, were. Yes, you were. Wait, no, y'all. <laughs> Like Same white educators, not necessarily white people, but white educators. Um, but then she played this video of this other woman who was like doing this whole conversation. They were all lactation nurses, and she said, Arela. And I was like, Was she white too? She said, Arela. Arela. <laughs> the way you're saying Why it, was, was she something else? Because she didn't say areola. She did say something else. No, Not I'm areola. asking, was the video the video lady a white lady? Yes. Is it a How do you spell areola? Is it a cultural A-R-E-O-L-A. thing? A-R-E-O-L-A. Also known as areola or areola. What and does Siri say? That's what I'm about to say. But like, these are people who had like medical Very. degrees. They were doctors. How do you ask Siri a question? I don't know. That's a theory. How do you say areola? <laughs> oh, she's not saying it. Siri, can you hear me? I don't know. Boss knows how to make Siri work. I don't. I say, how do you turn her on? How Wait, do you I... pronounce areola? I was tripping out. <laughs> Look at I'm me really tripping out about that. I, every time I add, talk to someone in the medical day, I'm like, hey, can you pronounce this word for me? I'm guys now really I'm like look like you're looking for here it. wait here I'm having the Arela. oh do it again Arela. 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 stop it and it's spelled A-R-E-O-O-L-A Areola Arela. 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 y'all I was in the comments of the classroom like Call me crazy, but I've never heard Areola pronounced like this. <laughs> I don't believe wow. it. Wow. And I don't believe it. I'm, I'm, asking, even... I'm asking the oldest person I know. <laughs> hey, Nana. How do you pronounce the How brown part? How do you part? pronounce the brown part around your boob? Your nipple. Around your nipple. Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> what is the brown part around your nipple called? I don't know. You don't know what the brown thing around your nipple is called? (laughs) (laughs) Nana! (laughs) We need a doctor. (laughs) I just know the nipple. That's (laughs) all I know. (laughs) Who could we call? She said, should we Google it? (laughs) 
might one, give you a whole I'm update give with you this one word. More the next chance, episode. Santa, you have one more chance. What is the brown thing around your nipple called? <laughs> I'm on the toilet. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go Google it because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what is it called? An areola or an areola. <laughs> areola. <laughs> what? Okay. All right, Nana. I'll call you later. All right. Bye. <laughs> Y'all, what kind of world do we live in? You got 80-year-olds taking a cell phone to the bathroom. He said, all I know is the nipple. (laughs) Hold on. I'm I'm still copper classic because this guy is really safe. I was going to say, do we not know anyone in med school? I'm trying to think if I know anybody. I have a serious question for you, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. What is the brown part around your nipple called? No. Oriella. Or, uh, <laughs> oh, you know what it's called. <laughs> say that again. You know what it's called. How did you say that? I said it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm not pronouncing it right, but it's called. Oriella. Oriella. <laughs> Oriella. Okay. Okay, gotta go. He said, just tell me, how do you really say it? There's we apparently don't... two pronunciations. There's the areola, or there's, how do you say it, Kyle? Areola. 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 Well, I said the first one, Oriella. No. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying Oreo. That that was not an option. <laughs> that, why did we why did we call the first one? and ask Nana? And Nana said, I don't know. All I know is the nipple. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Not oh wow. You don't learn stuff like that. <laughs> oh my god. All right, bye. Bye. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, if you know this word and know the history of the word, please let us know. Please teach my grandma. I remember really are saying it right wrong because in the Google search it says a small circular area and particular ring of pigmented skin are surrounding a nipple. The areola. Areola. Arela. I wish we Y'all. had. Why don't we have any doctor friends? Our pediatrician. I'm sure <laughs> Oh, ask um Iris. Or no, not Iris. I can't speak. Um, the nurse, nurse. Vanessa. Vanessa. Iris is mom. Vanessa. I don't. I was thinking of her daughter. But yes, Vanessa. All right. All right. All Do right. We- this- what if we ask Dr. Gavami? He's a medical, he's an actual doctor, a surgical doctor. But she might hear this. I don't know. I don't have Gavami on, on speed dial. Like I have. <laughs> I'm, not saying, like, I'm just saying after this call, I would like to say, hey, Dr. Gavami, can you educate us on can this? Can you word? teach us how to say Arila? Arila. Arila. This is, this is my question of the year to be on. on like early of the month right now. This is I'm this day old. Okay, okay. okay. Vanessa. Yeah. How <laughs> do you what is the brown thing around your nipple called? Your areola? She said areola. Yeah. Okay, yeah. have you ever heard it pronounced as areola? Areola. Oh no. <laughs> I wonder if it's a southern thing. We're we're literally filming a podcast and having a debate on if it's called Arela or Areola. And we decided that you're the closest thing to a doctor that we know. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't doubt that in people in other areas would pronounce it different. Because we do have that in medicine where we'll get nurses from other areas and then they'll pronounce words completely different than how we say it out here in California. But it, 
if you hear it here, like all these nurses right here in front of me will say areola. <laughs> all right. If you find a nurse that says areola, call us back. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you're saying arugula, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Arela or Areola? Take a poll for us and let us know. All right, I will. All right, bye. Also, y'all, if you yes, are Nana. Daughter, oh, she's back. So Monique knew what it was right away. She said it's Areola. Nana, we all know what it is. We just wanted to see how you pronounced it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, she said, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, did sorry. you really call Monique and ask her what is the brown thing around your nipple? I did. She's doing <laughs> the same thing we're doing. I love it. She said, I did. She said, I did my research. Yeah, Nana, why don't you know that? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Nana. All right. Thanks, Nana. Bye. Bye. <laughs> she said, I have no idea why I don't Guys, know. This is making me so happy. <laughs> All right. I love this. We need to know do you see, a- do you say areola? That's option A. Or do you say areola? Areola. That's option B. Please comment and tell us how you pronounce the brown thing around your nipple. Or yours might be pink. Yes. Tan. Tan. What other colors? <laughs> what other colors are there? I don't know. All I know is mine got dark, dark brown when I was pregnant. All I, know I was is- just about to look I- down and see what color mine were. But- mine are literally the same size as a tit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have very so small ones. Big that Dr. Gavami was like, hey, you don't want to do an areola slash areola reduction? And I was like, are they that big? He was like, they are. And I asked Zach, do my big pepperoni areolas bother you? And he said, no. So then I said no to the reduction. Good they job. Literally, they literally cut your whole areola areola off, put it on a table, and then Stop. Cut, cut around it to make it a petite areola areola and then sew it back on so then you see where like your new one is like i feel like you can see the the mark like i've seen it i wonder how many women do that procedure it's actually really common yep because people because your areola gets so big yeah, or just like, different people have different sizes. But what do you see online? Like, what do you see when you see like movies and like the girls are naked or whatever? Everyone yeah, has small, cute little petite areolas. Well, those oh, cute petite areolas, I have like ten times the size of that. My areola is this big. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just like put this whole areola in your it's mouth. Big right here. This is my what? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. If you could fit to do everyone in your mouth, that is a talent. You might choke. Oh. <laughs> do you guys want to do a quick round of assumptions? Yeah, let's do it. Should we save it? Because I feel like we talked for a long time. I know we did, but I really wanted to go through some of these. I thought they were great. I think we should just do another episode and let that be like its whole episode. Fine then. Just we'll do stay. this another time, you guys. Thanks for participating anyways. I just think that it could really be its own episode. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like, like I want to talk about it, like tomorrow or something. We can go. Yeah, we can get into them. Do you guys want to do your WTFs? Because I already did mine with my sex story with mom. Um, A WTF. For advice, I feel like you're in a good space to give advice right now, Shannon. I think I'm all with advice right now. Honestly, um, my advice, (laughs) I don't even know. I feel like I need to take my own advice at the moment. But it should just, I don't know. What is, I don't know. I honestly. Do you want a moment? 
Yeah, give me a moment. Do you okay, so I got two WTFs. First of all, first of all, I'm jumping right in. The other night, I'm praying with my kid. It's Friday night. We're, you know, I got the kids in bed mad early too. I was super happy. I've been hearing that Cheyenne say she gets her kids in bed by 7.30. Um, Cheyenne's travel buddy, travel friend, wife, mom, Ashley gets her kids. She posted something about having her kids in bed by 7, 7.30. So I've been like... What the hell are the parents doing that I am not doing? So I'm getting my kids in bed at like 8, 8.30 and at 9 o'clock, Boz is talking about, hey, mom, my tongue is hurting, like trying to stay up with distracting me. So I got the kids washed, read books, like dinner in bed by 7.30. I felt like the baddest, coolest mom boss Friday night. So then Boz is, no, this was Thursday night. Then he's praying and he starts praying for all of his sick classmates. Oh, I'm praying for so-and-so who threw up. <laughs> I'm praying for so-and-so who was coughing. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and he's like really intently praying and saying names. So all I'm thinking is, oh, damn, like my kid's going to be sick. And this week he has winter break. There's no school this week. So I was literally stressing out. And then later on that night, he woke up in the middle of the night, came in the room. He's like, mom, my tummy, bleh, all on the bed. Um, so I'm like, oh, okay, I knew this was coming. Like I was mentally prepared, but <laughs> it was still like, I had to clean it up. It's in the middle of the night. So Ew. it only lasted for a night, but then he threw up the next morning and then he was fine. So I was very thankful. It was like a quick in and out. So that's my one WTF, which is parent life, kid life. My own personal WTF was yesterday. And it's because I'm like, I'm on my cycle. I'm hormonal. Harriet was coming out. Um, but I've been trying to be better about like regulating like myself when I know like <laughs> I'm hormonal and a little extra crazy. Um, so <laughs> what was it? I text Mezzy. I wasn't feeling good. I was hungry. And sometimes like I cook all the time, but sometimes like I don't want to eat my food. You know, sometimes I'm like, I'll look in the fridge and there'll be plates sitting there, like just looking all pretty. And I'm like, I don't want none of this shit. Yesterday was one of those days. Um, so I text Messier and I was like, hey, we bring some food home. He was like, didn't we buy groceries yesterday? And everything in me wanted to be like, ah. but I was just like, all I could do is do is say, okay. And I called Cheyenne and my mom and I vented to them. It wasn't even a vent. It was just more so like Harriet's trying to come out, y'all. But like this whole self-control, I'm fighting through it. And it was great because he brought food home and anyways, and I was a happy camper. But I was just happy that I didn't let Harriet get to him. So that was like my advice. If you know that you're like crazy sometimes when you're hormonal and you can help it, help it. Cause if I had gone off in that man in that moment and he was still bringing me food, like I would have just been like this crazy hormonal period, bitch. Yeah. Is that why Zach put me downstairs in my own room? Yeah, you got. <laughs> <laughs> he he physically gave you a time. Right. You you right. I'm really you sitting teach. in this room. He even brought me two laptops and an iPad. He said in case anything oh. dies, <laughs> you have time. Oh, he he really did. pushed you away. Yeah, Messier brought food home today. Like, I think he just knows. He's like, he's he's gauging. And it's also, I'm learning how to communicate. I think, or just get a little better. Or just, you know, it wasn't an issue. I knew I was being crazy. So I was like, okay, we're going to be crazy. Vanessa just texted me. She said, I walked around. I asked 12 nurses and my supervisor. No one has ever heard of a Arela. It's yes. definitely Ari. And then she put a capital O, Ola. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she did the homework <laughs> right away. I think this is great. Watch there be like a whole Arela, Areola Instagram train. Something can happen. We're going to get to the bottom of this. It's going to pop up in my fucking Instagram. Instagram and my phone in just two seconds, you guys. We're gonna get all these. I'm so stuck on the fact that Nana had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> she said nipple. And Dad <laughs> literally said she probably wasn't taught that. <laughs> no, but that's true. I know, which is just nuts. Like, oh my gosh, I have to say this for a whole other episode. But I recently learned the history of gynecology, and like. 
it's all based off of this guy who I think, in my opinion, sounds like he was a serial killer. But it's a like, guy. yeah, gynecology. Okay, okay. From this white I man. really got to go to the bathroom. I'm not trying to cut your serial killer. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I don't know. He's talking about it right now. <laughs> talking about later. Can later, we save later. that combo? Because I'm really interested to know. Yes, because I'm doing all this like feminine health care, vaginal health care. I'm learning all these things, getting certified so I can like. Well, get certified to do vagifacials. Um, no, that's Ooh. like an addition. I'm doing steaming, vaginal steaming. Hey. So like yoni, Sorry, yoni I'm not going to be an esthetician of the vagina, but I can help. I'm just saying, you said companies. all things vagina, so learn I all know. things vagina. I, I know, but I'm not here to Healthy. make them look pretty. I just got facials. some vagina. Um, it's not about looking pretty. It's about like getting the hair growth out. I don't know. I gotta oh, go. No, I'm here to internally heal. So like, we have, like fibroids and cysts. Yeah, I can thank help you, you Shannon. Heal. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, He's over bye. there. <laughs> you guys can do the exit. I'm out of here. Peace I'm gonna say bitches. peace out, Shy. What's your Instagram? Shy not shy. Peace out. Peace out. Oh, did Shannon leave? Oh, it's like it went black. But we'll say thank you guys for tuning she in. She said I need to go. She needs to go. And I, I need to go too. It's like seven o'clock. My man, uh, Mezier and my kids are probably looking for me. It's dinner time. But I just want to say thank you all for tuning in. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, shit. With the Think Loud crew. So happy that we were all able to get back together. I think we really missed each other and we had a good time talking to each other. So don't forget yes. to go comment, Hello. like, sub- subscribe, review on your favorite podcast platform and on, on YouTube. You can find us at Think Loud Crew as well as Instagram. Um, my Instagram, if you want to follow me, is R. Kyle Lynn. And you can follow me at Hair by Shannon Z. Have a great week and we will see you next week. Yeah.